Welcome to the Delaware Way. Hey, are you looking for a new friend? We may have one for you. Patrick Carroll is the executive director of the Delaware Humane Association. That's not who I'm talking about. I'm talking about Puddles, the gentleman he brought in with him. How, and he, Puddles is so good. Yeah, he's really calm. He's doing, behaving very well on camera, definitely. How old is Puddles? He's five months old. He's a puppy, young. I can't believe someone hasn't snapped him up. He's exactly what people would want in, in a companion. Absolutely. Well, the thing is, he's brand new to us. He just came within the week. So as soon as he's, um, as soon as he's ready for adoption and, and he's on TV, he'll probably get snapped up. Yeah, I, I hope he gets snapped up quickly. Yeah. The name Puddles, though, should people be concerned about the name? Uh, well, they can certainly change it. He's, <laughs> he's brand new. I mean, it's a new name to him because he was a stray um, uh, out of state, and so he... He, they can change it. Yeah, it, Puddles it, isn't quite a, a male name, I don't think. So, and it doesn't. It, it's not because he has any kind of pro particular problem, right? Right. Puddles. Um, I don't know that he was named Puddles because he piddles, uh, <laughs> which is you know the, the nervous P. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's not a good connotation, I guess. No, no, but no. He's, but, he's waiting for a new home and a new name, I think, too. I'm hurting you here. I know Puddles <laughs> is looking away from me now, going, "What are you doing? Right. <laughs> don't bring that up." <laughs> No, he's wonderful. And how many dogs do, and do you have cats up for adoption? Yes, well? we do, dogs how, and cats. How many dogs and cats do you have up for adoption right now? Well, our facility in Wilmington, we have um, as many as 40 to 50 dogs at a time and about 100 cats. Where do they come to you from? Uh, it's a good question. We, uh, we take dogs and cats in from owner surrenders, which is a family or an individual who needs to give up a pet for various reasons. Maybe they had to, uh, they've had kids with allergies or they've had a life change that you know, caused them to have to give them up. Um, or someone died or someone had to move. Uh, that's, the, that's one way. And then another and way. And those animals are family ready. Yeah, yeah, it, absolutely. And you know a lot about them because they've come from a family and we've done an intake assessment on them and gotten information. Uh, and then the other way would be we pull from other shelters uh, that handle an animal control contract or deal with strays. And they're usually very full. So we, we do that locally as well as um, we pull from the south mainly. And that's just becoming a big thing with shelters here because there's a, there are a lot of, um, lot of dogs and cats in need in the south and not enough homes. And up here we have a little bit of a shortage and uh, we have plenty of homes. So of what interest. is the supply and demand like, the, the demand for adoption and the supply you have? Where does it run? Well, there's just a lot of demand. There is a lot of demand up here in the Northeast. You know, plenty of people looking to add a pet to their home. Pet ownership is way up. Uh, it's just that there's a lot of supply in the South because of, um, you know, rural <coughs> rural areas where dogs or cats are roaming free or, or get out. And, you know, they're, they're still not spaying and neutering at the level that we are. So um, there are lots of puppies and kittens. But uh, I think the big thing with supply and demand for us is that the demand for smaller dogs is great and the supply isn't as great. Uh, you know, like everyone, a lot of people come in and say they want, you know, a dog this big uh, and fluffy and hyperallergenic. So one of our biggest challenges is to um, find those dogs, and we find them mainly through owner surrenders if someone has to give somebody up. But the other big thing is um, just to help people understand that there are dogs that are great dogs that are medium size or big that need a home, and um, they can make great pets. And, like and this, this guy's a great example of that. The wonderful thing, and, and I had some personal experience with this because we got it when my grandmother was alive, we got her a dog, but we, we specifically wanted an older dog that she wouldn't have to train, she wouldn't right. have to bring along, that's been with a family mm -hmm. that is, is ready to just move in. Right, and, yes. and is already house trained and all of that, and, the, and it was perfect. It was sure. an incredibly perfect companion. So yep. I think that sometimes the, the, the thought process has to change because it depends on what you need. You may need somebody that's family ready. You may need a dog that's oh, family sure. ready. Oh, sure, yeah. Because you know what you get, right? Yes, I mean, when it comes to owner surrenders, for sure. But, you know, some of our strays that we pull from, um, from, um, from other shelters, we may not know. We have them, you know, sometimes a very quick amount of time, and, uh, and you know, they may be nervous. Uh, nothing that can't be worked with, but uh, we may not always know. Well, very quickly, I know you have an initiative now to, to try to get health care for more animals, especially with people that can't afford that health care. Mm -hmm. Yeah, access to veterinary care is, has continued to be an issue in our, in our community and in our country for low-income folks. So um, we at Delaware Maine have, you know, just tried to figure out where our part in that is with access to veterinary care. So we have embarked this past year on a, a One Health initiative, uh, looking at how um, One Health is really about how um, the total picture of health between human health, uh, the environment, and um, 
and animal health. So we have partnered with Henrietta Johnson Medical Center in Southbridge, which is literally a mile from us at Del Delaware Humane. Uh, it's a human health care center, and we provide a, a free veterinary clinic for animals on the first Saturday of the month there now. And it's for cl clients of Henrietta Johnson and their pets, and also people in that community, in the 19801 community. So we, we see, we have volunteer vets, we have volunteer vet techs, and uh, we have, we're working with students at University of Delaware in the pre-vet program, and also uh, University of Pennsylvania Vet School, which is only a half hour from us. Oh, that's wonderful. So all of us work together to, to provide care for those pets, about 35 to 40 a, a month. So. When Puddles gets adopted, you're gonna let us know, right? And, and Absolutely. You'll, and you'll let us know his new name? Yes, I can time. do that. <laughs> Thank you so much, I appreciate you coming in. Thanks for having me. Patrick uh, Carroll. Thanks, Puddles. Patrick Carroll, Executive Director of the Delaware Humane Association. Are you looking for something to do? We have a list of cultural and historical events coming up in Delaware when the Delaware Way continues.